Yes, she's standing here with me now. Uh, what we'll find out what you can, then. Uh, here, as soon as we could. Yes, thank you. Bye. Uh, Philip just wanted to stop at the hospital and okay. check on the workers. So, what the hell happened? What, what do we actually know about this accident? Well, uh, not much more than what I told you on the phone. The crane uh, that collapsed is being examined. Yeah. And most of the injuries weren't too serious. The people went home already. And we can't rule out the possibility that this was intentional. Who would do something like this? Well, there have been protests, you know. Groups of people that are concerned about the environment, other groups that are concerned that the big, bad American company is going to come down here and gobble up the island, and, well, we've been spending time with them all along, trying to come to grips with their concerns. Okay, you know, I want to see the, all the intelligence you have on all these groups and all the people involved, okay? Of course. They want to shut us down, Philip. They want to claim victory. They're not going to shut us down. We're not going anywhere. Good. You know, we can't let all of Richard's hard work go to waste. We need to find out who did this, and we need to stop them. What happened to the men at the construction site in San Cristobal? What do you mean? I thought the accident went as planned. It did, but there's been a slight problem. Edmund, I really don't have time for this. Carmen, make time. I've been trying to plant stories with the press about the accident, and Rich has been doing a perfect job of covering it all up. Now I need unnamed sources at the site to talk to Edmund, the press. Edmund, you to... cannot reach those men. I know. That's the problem. That's why I need you to contact them. They're long gone. What? And I have bigger problems, much bigger to, to worry about. You have to tell me what happened the night Ben was murdered, Pilar, and I know that you know. You have to tell me before somebody else gets hurt. Ben's dead, and people have to let him rest in peace. He's not resting in peace Yeah, well, now. Ben can't rest right now, Pilar, because a lot of people's lives are still being ruined because of this. Please, tell me what happened. What do you know? There's nothing else to say. Yeah, I think there is something else to say, Pilar. Listen to me. You talked to my mother that night, and after you talked, she dragged herself out of her hospital bed. The next thing we knew, we found her in her car over on Fifth Street, right by the towers. And while she was away, Ben was murdered. I think that my mother might have been there, at the very least... I think that she at least might know what happened. And I pray for your mother. I pray for her every day. I have to know what you two talked about. Come on, Pilar, you have to talk to me here. You have to help me. What did you say? Ben. We talked about Ben. Does the defense have any more witnesses, Mr. Marler? No, Your Honor, we do not. I want to testify. Mr. Marler, we're waiting. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I told you it was a bad idea. Ross, I don't have anything left. I didn't do it. I didn't do it is not a defense. Well, somebody has to believe me. Mr. Marler. Somebody has to believe me, Ross. Mr. Marler, the court's waiting. Are you resting your case or not? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, may we have a brief recess so I can speak to my client? Very brief. The jury will remain in place. She can't do this, Abby. She can't testify. She gets up there, she'll get destroyed. Doris will eat you alive. Ross, I cannot let this trial end, my trial end, without getting up there and telling the jury that I'm innocent myself. You don't go up there and just tell your side of the story and sit down. Doris is going to cross-examine you and she'll tear you apart. Well, she can't do anything worse than what everybody else has done. Think again. Danny, since you single-handedly put us in this position, help your wife out. Talk her out of it now. Maybe she'd confess. What? A show. Maybe she took the stand if she was under oath. Maybe she'd just tell the truth. Maybe. I can almost accept that she did it if she'd just stop lying about it. All right. What's going on? Why don't you want to take Ross's advice? Because it's not his life on trial. He doesn't know what's going on in my head. Oh, fair enough. That's fair. Do you think maybe that's allowing him to be a little more objective? I am being objective, and I'm looking at that jury, and there's no way that they're going to quit me. But maybe if I get up there and I testify, they'll see that I'm not afraid to face them, and one of them could change their mind. But 
It only needs one of them. That's my only hope here. Michelle, no, it's not. We have reasonable doubt with a forensic expert. You know, Ross, to be honest, yesterday you said that wasn't enough, didn't you? A lot has changed since yesterday. Well, nothing has changed. Her only alibi got up there on the stand and, and admitted that he we lied. Have that's reasonable all that's... doubt. Also, with his maid and the questionable financial situation, I am not going to put you on the stand and have you blow a hole in reasonable doubt. I'm not going to do it. Well, you can't stop me. You can't. That I, much is true. I know my rights, and if I want to get up there and I want to testify, then I'm going to do it, and I, and I will. I'm going to do it with or without you, Ross. You were in your room studying. Um, I, I was, I was, but um, I had to get out of there, you know, because she's babysitting uh, Ruby and he's back, and it was kind of like a nursery stuff. So. Uh, but you know what? I'd actually like to go in. No, 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 it's not. I, I like it out here. Truth is, I'm kind of sick of dealing with people myself. Oh, except for you. Yeah. Yeah. Families. I, mean, I thought once the adoption went through, everything would be smooth, but it's just a big mess. Philip and Harley, yeah, they're in the same crystal doing some business thing, and that now I'm here all by myself, all alone. You're not alone. Okay. Richard, do you have any history on that crane that collapsed? Well, Dax is chasing that down right now, as a matter of fact. Well, I was thinking if you could track where that crane was shipped from, then we'd know who had access to it from shipping to delivery. That's right. I was a police officer. I was a private investigator after that. Who have you interviewed up till now? Well, let's see. Everyone who was entered into the hospital was questioned. Also, everyone at the construction site. Is there anybody who's not, uh, you know, called for? Well, everyone survived, thank God. No, I just mean... Has anybody taken off? Oh, right. It, it, well, we haven't had time to compare the, uh, the employment roles with who was actually present. You know, we were too busy getting medical aid to everybody, but that is a good next step. You know, Richard, I hate to say this, but you know who could have done this? Edmund. Edmund, yes. Uh, the thought did cross my mind, yes. Edmund has been running around Springfield acting like this project was his idea and his alone. So if he's responsible, that makes him look pretty bad. You know what? Let's not just sit around here. Let's go find Dax and let's go over these employment roles with him. Good idea. Okay. Hey, you know, um, if something stands out, if anything seems strange to you, let me know. I mean, this is what I was always good at, you know, grilling the bad guys. If somebody's lying, I can find out for you. Okay. Uh, Philip. Yeah. About my brother, um... How has Edmund been behaving? Uh, well, Richard, he's not my favorite person, so... <laughs> yes, he, he can be difficult. Yeah. Um, what I was trying to get at is, do you think he could be involved in this in any way? I don't know why he would do that, Richard. He has been running around Springfield trying to take credit for this project. Um, actually, to the point of being overprotective. Last week, he wanted me to put on ridiculous amounts of security. Now, it doesn't make any sense. If he were behind this, why would he risk my saying yes to that? Mm. You understand? Because if I had, this might not have happened. It's a good point. Well, thank you for telling me that. Uh, we should be prepared just in case. And for the press, Edmund is not beyond capitalizing on something like this. You know what I mean? What about my taking on more responsibilities with the company? <laughs> and not just the San Cristobal, with all the sporting various entities. Of course, there'll be a seat on the board of directors, stock options, that sort of thing, and naturally my salary will rise to the occasion. Uh, boy, God. Mm. Uh, no, no, I think I like my idea better. You do? Yeah, but it was funny. It was funny, <laughs> and I assumed the intent was to amuse, so. I wouldn't waste my time trying to amuse you, so I'll just cut to the chase. You're going to give me what I'm asking for, and a lot more. 
Well, you're not amusing me anymore, Edmund. So just get out. Not before our future presentation. You wouldn't want to miss this one, Philip. After all, you're its star. So then I followed Philip to the Springfield Inn, and I found him in Jim and Beth's wedding suite. What? He said that he went there to offer them the Spalding jet to make amends for decking Edmund at the wedding. I don't know. I, I don't know what to believe. I mean, he's been acting so strangely ever since we came back from here. And I would never wish for an accident like this to happen, but at least it's giving him some sort of a distraction from all that other stuff. I don't know. This accident is so horrible. I don't know. Horrible is the word. I mean, half the injured workers were here at the palace. What? Yes, really? the hospital was full. Thank God I wasn't contagious anymore. Richard would have never let me help him. Wait, wait, what do you mean contagious? I had the measles. I didn't know that. I mean, my father told me about the whole chili thing, but he... Yeah. Wow, you must have looked really cute. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I looked adorable. <laughs> so I guess you haven't been seeing a lot of Richard lately. <laughs> no, I have, actually. He, um... He was there the whole time by my side, taking care of me. When we had to postpone the wedding, he didn't blink. I mean, even then, when he found out that he shouldn't marry me and that I'm basically useless to him, he's Wait, still, you know. what are you talking about? What do you, what do you mean? There, uh... Well, the doctor said that... I had some tests done, and the doctor said that there were some complications with the birth of R.J. And, um... Well, they don't think that I'll be able to have any more children. I'm so sorry. Richard said that, uh... They didn't care. How can you say that this guy doesn't love you? I don't know. You know, I don't know, because this, this should have been the deal breaker, you know. This should have crushed him. And you know what he did instead? Instead, he threw a slumber party for Tammy and all of her girlfriends from school. I mean, he's just, he's just in love with you. No, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. What? That's for Why sure. do you no. keep putting this guy off? I mean, what does he have to do to convince you? I don't you? know, okay? I don't know. I just think that he needs... He just needs a push. Uh-uh. No, don't you do anything, Harley, because we have some serious problems here. No, I know, you're right. I just think that maybe... Maybe Richard needs a little break from... Princeton. What did my mother say about Ben? She's so understanding, you know? I told her how terrible I felt about what he was doing to you, about what he was doing to my family. And what else? Come on, Pilar, what else? I don't want to say the rosary again. I want to pray for your mother. You can pray for her later. Right now, tell me what happened. What else? Why are you so scared to talk about it? When I came to see you that night, Pilar, that was after the murders, wasn't it? You were a nervous wreck. Your mother said that the two of you had been arguing about Ben, but there was more to it, wasn't there? Hey, listen, all the prayer in the world right now is not going to fix this situation. If you were there and if you know anything, tell me. If you don't, an innocent girl is going to jail. Now, Danny is not allowing me in the courtroom, let alone in Then focus on San Cristobal. That's something you can do. I told you, Why I... Why did you let those men leave? Let them? I pulled them out. You pulled them out? Carmen, why didn't you just leave urine samples and sign confessions? Do you have any idea how guilty that makes them? Oh, what does it matter? No one knows where they are. Michelle, I cannot in good conscience put you on that stand. Well, look, you said that I was in deep trouble. Can't get any worse. It could, but right now we have hope. If I put you on the stand, we have nothing. It's over. I don't agree. Oh, Danny, please. Michelle is an honest woman, Ross. She takes the stand and speaks for herself. 
I gotta believe that that jury will sense that she's honest. Listen to me. She's not taking them out for coffee. Well, right? She is testifying. All we need, and testifying without preparation does not bring out the best in people. Is one juror. That's it. One. And I believe that at least one of them will sense that she's honest. Well, you should have sensed that a long time ago. Look, Ross won't let Michelle do this, right? Well, no, he doesn't want her to do it, but unfortunately, she's very determined. You know, this could help her. She does have the truth on her side. It no, wasn't true. enough to convince her best friend. Look, we gotta get Ross to talk her down. I mean, it was bad enough that we let Len get up there a lot. Excuse us. Mr. Marler, are you ready to rest your case? No, Your Honor, we're not. The defense calls to the stand Michelle Bauer Santos. <laughs> Just answer my questions directly. Nothing more, nothing less. Where to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guide? I do. Please state your name. Michelle Bauer Santos. Michelle. Did you kill Ben Moore? No, I did not. Are these your gloves? No. Did you ever see them before they were discovered in your room? No, I did not. Thank you. Michelle, were you at the Towers Complex between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m. the 15th of November, 1999? No, I was not. Did you see Ben Warren between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m. of that same evening? No, I did not. Did you speak with Ben Warren at all that evening? No. The fact of the matter is, you didn't speak to Ben Warren Unless you absolutely had to. Is Objection. that correct? Objection. Sustain. I'll rephrase. Did you like Ben Warren? No. He had done horrible things to the people that I loved. Is that why you argued with him at a bar and restaurant called Company? Yes. Uh, I, I had just found out about something that he had done, and um, I was blowing off steam. And what about this knife that you allegedly pulled on him? Was this a weapon that you carried with you? No. Was it a hunting knife? No. A butcher knife? No. Well, then, what was it? It, it was a steak knife. I mean, I, I, I saw Ben coming, and I grabbed the first thing on the table next to me. It probably could have been a spoon, and I wouldn't have even noticed. So, these alleged threats against Mr. Warren, they weren't altogether that serious, were they? I was seriously angry, but I... that's all. I didn't want Ben dead. I didn't. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, he was the one that set us free, in a way. And what do you mean by that? Well, my husband and I, um... Danny never really wanted to be a part of his family business, and he wasn't. But he felt bad leaving his, his mother and... and his sister, he didn't want to desert them. And then Ben came along, and Ben and Carmen were together, and Ben started taking care of everything. And so, no matter how much I disliked the man, he really was the reason Danny and I could walk away and, and live our lives freely. I see. And where were you living at the time of the murder? We were living with uh, my brother and his wife at my old house, and we were working on plans for a new house, and, and Danny, I just got a job in the music industry, and I, I was going back to medical school. Your Honor, are we going to see scrapbooks next? None of this is relevant. Sustained. Let's move on, Mr. Marler. Michelle, where were you the night of the murder? I was with my husband at home most of the night. Were you there the entire time? No. I went out for some ice cream. Uh, the ice cream store owned by Mr. Len Murray? And what happened at this store? 
Well, it was locked. I must have just missed closing time, so I, I saw a light on in the back, and I knocked a couple of times. Nobody answered when I waited, so I left. So when Mr. Murray was testifying in this courtroom, you believed everything he was saying? Yes, I did, because I was there. Uh, he certainly would recognize me on sight. He's known me since I was a little kid. And did you know that your husband had spoken to him before the trial? No, I didn't. I was very upset when I found out that he had asked Len to say that he had seen me. You were very upset. Why is that? Because I didn't want to lie, because we didn't need to. I didn't do anything. I guess Danny just got scared. I mean, I had just gone out for ice cream, and I got accused of a murder that I could never have... No, Michelle, thank you. Thank you. The only reason Danny lied was... was because he knew what people would think because my last name is Santos, and I, I, he just was scared. I was scared. I am scared. I mean, just because I went out alone at a certain time, and then I was in prison, I, it was like a nightmare. I mean, what would you do? You know what? Um, I was cleaning, no, and no. I found it. And no, I, I'm beginning to be an expert at this type of stuff. What? Uh, Drew has, like, every single doll she's had when she was a kid. And, uh, she says that, uh, she keeps them forever. I guess, uh, dolls stick with her better than most people. Yeah. My mom gave me this one when I was five years old on my birthday. Gosh, I really, really miss her. I know what you mean. You don't... I'm glad that my dad has this new life and everything. But this, this Beth, it just doesn't feel right. You know, I mean, she got married in her ex-husband's house. And Philip gave her away. I mean, it's just totally surreal. Mm. Well, at least you have Harley. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I thought finding her would be like... Not getting my mom back, but just big, you know? I don't know. I, I, I love her. I do. It's just that she's she's not my mom, you know? She's, she's Beck's mom. I don't know. I guess I just... I expected too much, I guess. And Beth, I mean, she's not even close to my mom. She'll never be my mom. And my dad is whole is all wrapped up and everything. And th there's going to be a new baby. I just, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, this family thing kind of sucks. <laughs> I know that look. I'll have a look. My face is a perfect Harley, mess. Harley, don't start playing Cupid. We have our hands in some serious problems here. No, I know. I know how serious the problems are here. I... Hey, hey, you're right. What? What? Well, we tracked down the origin of the crane. Yeah. Galveston, Texas. Came with a supervisor, uh, a guy named Gil Brown, and a crew of five, all of whom are now missing. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they're just scared. Well, perhaps they should be. The entire crew came from Galveston as well. That's a bit much of a coincidence. What if they're just, you know, mm. incompetent and they made a huge mistake, they know they're going to get blamed, and they freaked out and took off? Well, I think there's really only one way that we can make sure. Do you know somebody in the Galveston area could look into it? Uh, I have a better idea than that. I think Richard and Kathy should go. Um, I don't... I, don't, I misunderstood you. you. You don't... You didn't mean for Richard and Cassie to go to Galveston and go crawling around looking for construction workers, right? Why not? We went undercover and it worked. Honey, think about it. You have the element of surprise. It's the last thing people expect. If this is you dangerous, know? I don't want Cassie we'll involved. We'll be careful. We'll check it out. Now, I hear that you guys were going away for a couple of weeks anyway. No, I was... So it won't be obvious. I was going to cancel that trip, Harley. And do what? Sit around here? Sit in your hands? Can you afford to wait for other people to hand you reports, hoping that they are right? I'll tell you, I've been reading in the newspaper, there's a lot of rumblings out there. You're going to take a lot of heat for this. Well, I suppose that's just going to be part of my job, you know? But you could go down there yourself. 
you could find these guys yourself. That way, your people would know that you're not afraid to go into the trenches. Yes, that, that's true. No, it's not, Richard. Actually, see, that's the problem with this. It sounds doable, but it isn't. Take it from somebody who's been there. You don't want to do this. You Anybody know. who worked on the construction site would recognize me. Not right. if we put you in a disguise. Not if we put you in a disguise. I mean, you know what? People, you'd be surprised at what people don't see when they're not looking for it. Really. I'm going to make some calls, and I'm going to check this out. Right? Hey. What? What, um, what are you thinking? I'm trying to help Richard and Cassie. We did it. It worked for us. Honey, we were lucky, and you're a detective. Uh, uh, what, are you, what are you up to? Are you just trying to get them together someplace so that things will start clicking in their relationship? They did for us. Okay, I know it's not the same thing. This, this is serious business. It is serious, honey. Yes. I'm gonna make those calls. You know what? I think Harley's right. I think this is a good idea. We should do this ourselves. It's good business. This isn't business, Cassie. If somebody sabotaged that crane, it's personal. All the more reason we should do this ourselves. Whoever is doing it is trying to hurt you, Richard, and I'm not going to sit around here and let it happen. Come on, I need to find those men. I may not be able to put them back on the construction project, but at the very least, I can make sure they don't talk. All right. They're in Galveston. Could you be a little more specific, please? Oh, and, and I really don't have any time for this. Those men did their job, all right? I pulled them out because I didn't want them to be traced back to me. Now, that's it. Everything else is your problem. Now, will you please leave me be, because I have to go in there and hear what's going on in that courtroom. Michelle, after you left the ice cream store, where did you go? Did you go home? No, I, I went to the cemetery. At 9 o'clock at night? I, I actually go there a lot to talk to my mother, visit her grave, but there's an uh, entrance on Harper's Avenue you can get in on the side. And why did you go there that night? I was angry at Ben, and I didn't like walking around angry. And I just needed to get it off my chest and talk to, talk to my mom about it. You know, I missed her a lot, and it just kind of helped me realize that we were finally free. I had the rest of my life with my husband, with the man that I love, and... That's what really mattered in the end. And so essentially, Ben Warren was your ticket to this freedom you talk of. Yes. And no matter what I thought of him, he was my best friend's father. And I could never take that from anyone. I could never take... Thank you. I didn't kill Ben Warren. Michelle, thank you very much. Your Honor, no further. <clears throat> this was a murder that you could never have committed. That's right. Why should we believe that you couldn't murder Ben Warren when we know, in fact, that you did murder Mick Santos? Objection! Oh, okay. The defendant opened the door. Your Honor! And that's not the only lie she's told here today. Listen to me, Pilar. I know you. I was in love with you. I know that you're a good person. You can't just stand by the side when somebody's hurt when you have the power to stop it. I don't want to hurt anyone, especially not you or your mother. So if you know something, you have to tell me. Even if you think that it could hurt my mother, you still got to tell me. If it's the truth, that's what she would want. And you don't have to worry about hurting me. I, I pretty much know that my mother is somehow involved in this. She was there the night Ben was killed, wasn't she? It's God's will. 
And God will take care God of God takes care of the people that take care of themselves. Pilar, you have free will here. You can make a choice. No. You can make this no, thing right. I, I know can't. you can. You have to tell you me, You don't Pilar. understand what's going on. Okay, okay? so explain it no, to me. No, just Please. leave me alone. No. Pilar, listen to me. You've got to do the right thing here. Your Honor, any mention in the Mick Santo case has been disallowed. The witness claimed that she could never murder. She said it twice. She never finished the thought. She never because finished. you cut her off, but it was very clear what she meant. But she didn't say it, Ms. Wolf. You're out. May I remind the district attorney to limit her cross-examination? And may I remind to what you that my law degree is just as big as yours? Well, oh, I know it's down, right. down, both of you. This is my courtroom. I'll issue the warnings here, Mr. Marler, and you are due for one, Ms. Wolf. If I so much as hear the first syllable of Mick Santos's name again, you'll get a mistrial with jeopardy attached. Understood? Mrs. Santos, let's talk about the day of the murder. You said that you didn't see or speak to Ben Warren between 7.30 and 9.30 p.m. that day. That's right. But you did see him earlier in court that day, didn't you? Yes, I did. And why were you in court that day, Mrs. Santos? I was testifying in family court for Drew Jacobs. In fact, you told a family court judge that Ben Warren tried to kill your husband and shouldn't be anywhere near children, didn't you? I honestly answered the questions that I was asked. You yes. tried to sabotage Drew Jacobs' adoption of Max Jacobs just to punish Ben Warren, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. I wanted her to adopt Max. I was there to testify for her. Funny it didn't work out that way. Objection. Sustained. Okay. So the night of the murder, you were at home with your husband, out not buying ice cream, then visiting the cemetery. Was that your testimony? Yes. So you were never at the Towers that night? N not then. Oh, but you were there some other time? We, after, after Danny and I went to apologize to Drew for what happened in, in court that day. After, after you killed Ben Warren? After he was dead. It was at 10 or 10.30. Oh, so you just conveniently showed up after somebody else killed I Ben Warren. I guess so. Objection. Sustained. So you do admit to being at the Towers right after the murder, but not seeing Ben Warren at all that night. I didn't see him. A witness positively identified you coming out of his Well, room. she's lying. Somebody's paying her off. Oh, just like you tried to pay off Lynn Murray? No. Oh, so he lied for free? Look, he, we were, he was trying to help. Oh, just like your husband? Yes. Your husband lies for you a lot, doesn't he? Objection. Sustained. When you were first arrested, your husband said to the police that you were with him all night, didn't he? He was scared. He was scared. Just like when he tried to coerce Len Murray into lying no, on his stand. No, he never pressured What about Jesse Blue? Murray? What? What? Your old fiancé, Jesse Blue? He lied for you as well, didn't he? No. Well, he knew Len Murray hadn't seen you at the ice cream store that night, and he didn't say anything. He kept his mouth shut to protect you, didn't he? I don't know. He knew a witness was lying on the stand, and he didn't come forward. I, I guess so, but I, guess I, so. I had no idea. guess so, Mrs. Santos? Well, here's the body count. Your husband lied. Your eyewitness lied. Your boyfriend Jesse's lied. Jesse's not my boyfriend. Your friend. brother lied. Rick wouldn't lie about well, anything. Well, either he lied in court or he lied on a hospital chart. Can you leave him alone? They're not on trial here. You manipulate here. every man around no. you. No. Objection. Sustain. You can make anybody lie for you. They know I'm innocent. Oh, they know you're innocent? How do they know that unless one of them was there? Unless one of them was the second shooter? What? Which one was it? Was it your husband? Was it your brother? No, Michelle, who they was never it? Do oh, that. Jesse then. Was it Jesse Blue? No. The man who said he owed you his life. What is he helped you kill Ben? No. Your Honor, I Would you leave Jesse alone? I'm questioning. Or what, Mrs. Santos? And ever since Jesse moved out, I mean, Drew's been acting like a zombie, you know? I mean, she doesn't sleep at night, and then when she does, she's got nightmares, and then I'll ask her what's wrong, and she won't even talk to me. You know, I, I, I just... I just sit there. She's trying to protect you. Yeah, well, it's not working. I, mean, I just feel so much better if she would talk, you know, yell, something. It's so weird to see her like this, you know? Yeah, but you just gotta wait it out, you know? Because what's happening right now, it's, it's not Drew, like you said. And usually she's the one doing everything, and right now you have to be the one to hang out, you know, and talk to her whether she needs talking or not. And you've got to be there for her because she'll get over it eventually. Thank you. 
been pretty smart. Not just book smart. People smart. Pretty amazing, actually. You mean, for a kid? <laughs> no. You're not a kid. you'd leave town now. And that's going to be very hard to justify. Uh, well, not necessarily. Um, if you're determined to do this, we could just say that you were going to Springfield to have some uh, high-level meetings with my father about the planning of the project. That's good. Yeah. I can get him to cover that. Actually, that, that, that could work, actually. All right. You guys go. We'll stay here, and we'll cover the job site. All right. Well, the palace is yours. Thanks. I've always had this sort of fantasy about a tiara, and I don't Easy, want to buy it. Honey. That's Lowell. Hey, Lowell. I knew it was you. Good. Nope, that's great. That's all I need. Yep, thank you. I will be in touch. You guys are set. What? What's that? Lowell found a bar where the crew guy, the crew supervisor, where he hangs out. Okay, well, may I make one last plea for letting the local authorities go in and check it out first? No, because we don't want to scare him away. And these guys already have their covers. Covers. One of you is a bartender, the other is a dishwasher. You're a married couple. You live in the room over the bar. Room. Singular. One. Yes, one room. It's for a good cause. You guys can pretend to be a married couple, can't you? Are you sure that your next flight to Galveston? Fine, then book it for me. No, I want to fly in the baggage compartment, of course, first class. How can I be expected to know when I'm going to return? I shall leave Galveston when my business there is done. Fine, an open end to return, then, please. No, thank you. Texas. And this should be fun. Your Honor, prosecution is badgering the witness. It's cross-examination, Mr. Marler. She's allowed to lead, but please, Ms. Wolf, stick to questions. <clears throat> Mrs. Santos, you testified that you had trouble with Ben Warren, didn't you? Yes. And you believe that Ben Warren set up your good friend, Bill Lewis? Yes. Got him arrested? Took away his livelihood? Yes. You also believe that Ben Warren drugged your husband I, and nearly killed him? I know that he did. You hated Ben Warren, didn't you? Yes. You well, hated Ben Warren enough to kill him? No. You didn't go on any ice cream run the night of November 15th, did you? No, you had I a gun. Did. And you went straight I... to room 3010 at the Towers Hotel and you confronted Ben Warren. No, I And didn't. you shot him. Stop! Michelle didn't kill Ben, and I know who did. This has been Guiding Light.